Hi, hello and welcome to what's hopefully going to be an extremely fun video. I have attempted to film a video like this before with my old camera, with my old setup, where I wanted to show my top 5 favorite red lipsticks. Now, back then I made the video, I uploaded it and then I looked at it and I thought, my gosh, none of these look anything like real life. So I privated the video and I never really like looked back. But now I have a much better camera, I've been able to make lip swatch videos and I think the lipsticks actually come across quite accurately with their undertones. So I thought, shall I attempt this again? Because when I tell you that red lipstick is one of my favorite things about makeup, I'm not even exaggerating anything. To me, red lipstick is life, red lipstick is elegance. Red lipstick comes in so many different undertones, finishes, we can talk about the red lipstick from now until tomorrow and we would not have covered even half of it yet. So, with this in mind, I want to swatch my top 10 favorite red lipsticks that I have in my collection. Some of them are going to be extremely old, even to the point where I think it's questionable that I still own them. But until they start smelling very off, I intend to keep them because there's one specific color that I actually haven't found a replacement for yet. What nude lipsticks are to a lot of people that is red lipstick to me. A lot of other people will tell you how they feel their best, at mo most at ease, uh, most confident when they're wearing some sort of a neutral or nude lipstick. And I'm not saying that the opposite counts for me because I do feel equally confident wearing a nude lipstick, but the amount of joy and like sass and life that red lipstick brings to my face and to my features is uh, incomparable to any other color. I love a lot of other colors of lipstick and I will wear pretty much anything, although these days I have my preferences, but I think nothing really beats a beautiful red lipstick. Literally, the red lipstick could be the only thing you put on your face, nothing else, and it would immediately give so much life to your complexion. And I know a lot of times people wear nudes and shy away from red lipsticks for no other reason but because they are a little bit uncomfortable wearing first of all such a bright color such a statement color red is a statement color people are going to see you they are going to notice you you're not going to you are going to stand out if you're wearing a red lipstick and i also understand that if you haven't found a formula that works for you you might feel very insecure wearing a red lipstick because if a nude moves around your face or is on your teeth it's not going to be a big deal. But obviously if a red lipstick were to move around your face or end up on your teeth, that would be bad. So I understand the hesitation. But what I have come to find out over the years of trying so many different formulas and so many different red lipsticks is if you find a really good formula, you never have to worry about your red lipstick looking unflattering or moving around. You just have to find the right formula, the right color, the right undertone and just something that makes you feel confident. Now because of that moving around factor, uh, most of the lipsticks that you're going to see included in this video, except for one, are either in a matte or like a cream to matte sort of formula. Neither of them is going to be a very shiny formula because I have a couple of those. Some of them will move around my lip lines unfortunately, which is why they're not going to be included in my top 10. I still wear them, I can still make them work. Uh, I wear a red lip gloss and I think I have a couple of red lip glosses from Pat McGrath Labs that actually work really well for me, but we're not at all going to be touching upon lip gloss today. This is going to be fully focused on red lipsticks and I just love me a good matte formula for a red lipstick. So the majority of these are going to be either matte or you know some sort of a cream lipstick that leans more onto the matte side than it really leans onto the shiny side. I'm going to apologize in advance that I'm everything around my mouth might start looking really wonky because obviously removing red lipstick uh, even to the best of my abilities might get a little bit messy towards the end of the video so apologies if I start to look like a clown by the end of the video I'm going to do my best not to but I think let's start with the fun part let's just start watching and talking about red lipsticks uh, also maybe heads up like half of these are from Lisa Eldridge so that's probably not going to be a surprise to anyone but I just wanted to mention it Lisa Eldridge makes fabulous lipsticks, she makes fabulous reds and 
I can tell you for a fact already now, my absolute favorite red lipstick in my collection is Ribbon from Lisa Eldridge, which if you have seen previous videos of me is not going to be a surprise to you at all. But I'm going to start off, I think, just in like a random order. I'm going to do the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks maybe last and we can do the other brands uh, before that. And the first brand that I'm going to start with is going to be Urban Decay. Now, most of you haven't been around my channel for that long, but back in the day, let's say circa 2015-2016, I finally discovered a lipstick formula that worked for me so well that I went ahead and purchased like half of the collection. And those were the Urban Decay Vice lipsticks. In 2015, I think, they launched a couple of colors together with the Gwen Stefani collection and they released a full-on collection of different finishes, multiple colors, I think towards the summer of 2016, if my memory serves me right. And past that point, I accumulated quite a few because I would always buy them when they were on sale on Feel Unique. So, I've cut down my Urban Decay collection quite a bit in the meantime, but I think the reds are some of the colors that I have kept thus far and there are two shades in here and maybe one bonus uh, shade that I would really like to share with you because to this day they remain my absolute favorites. Let me remove the lipstick that I have on today. We're going to swatch that uh, in a little bit. I'm also not going to be doing any sort of like lip liner or prepping of my lips in any sort of way unless they become so extremely dry that I can't put anything on anymore. But let's talk about the oldest lipstick I think that I currently have in my collection and that is one of my Urban Decay Gwen Stefani lipsticks. I think you can also tell just from how beat up the packaging is how much I have used this lipstick. The shade we're talking about is the shade Wonderland. Just FYI, I think they released all of these Gwen Stefani lipsticks eventually in their regular line, so all of these are, I think, to be found in their Vice lipstick line, if that line still exists, if I'm being honest. So here you have Wonderland, and you can immediately just see from the uh, bullet that this has been very well loved, very well used, and it is a very pink leaning red. This is somewhere in between a fuchsia red and an actual red and I just love it. It has such beautiful unique tones to it and I don't think anything in my collection has ever come close to being similar to Wonderland. Uh, Wonderland comes in the Urban Decay cream lipstick formula but their cream lipstick formula is very good. It has a lot of like um, heft to it. It looks very substantial on the lips and it is actually very long-lasting. Just let me put it on so that you can see how it looks like. As you can see, the lipstick is not overly shiny, it is not overly creamy, it applies quite a punch of pigment and I can tell you, because I've worn this lip lipstick for so many years, it is very long-lasting, it is very comfortable, it wears beautifully throughout the day, it reapplies beautifully throughout the day and I'm truly heartbroken because I put it on now and I think it has gone off, unfortunately. I think I will have to toss this lip lipstick after this video because unfortunately not only has it started to smell a bit of like crayons, that wouldn't be an issue for me, but I think I can, I can taste it. It's, it has like a I've gone off kind of taste. This is the first time I've had to throw away a lipstick because it has really gone off. But this lipstick comes from December 2015 and it's been heavily used and heavily loved. Um, I think I might keep the color around just for a color reference because I do want to have something similar in my collection and like I said, I haven't been able to find anything that is quite similar to this shade and if I'm not able to find anything similar to it, I might go and repurchase this lipstick because I will miss it. I'm really sad that I have to toss it, I will tell you. You can't see it on my face right now but in my heart I'm really like crying crocodile tears. Oh, I'm also going to swatch them on the back of my hand just, you know, so we can compare. So here is a swatch for Wonderland. The second lipstick from Urban Decay that I wanted to include in this video is another absolute classic from their brand and it is the shade Bad Blood. Bad Blood comes in their Comfort Matte formula and their Comfort Matte formula is exactly what it says it is. It is a matte that is very comfortable to wear. Again, very long lasting, uh, no issues wearing it throughout the day and this color in particular is just so incredibly beautiful and luscious on the lips. It leans on the classic red lipstick side but it's not a blue based red. There is a little bit of like warmth and brownness to it but it is also, but it also isn't a warm toned red. 
it is just an absolutely beautiful shade and I really hope it has not gone off because I would be heartbroken if I have to throw away two Urban Decay lipsticks today. No, this one is fine. Now in terms of color, I don't know that Bad Blood is very unique. I think plenty of other brands are making colors like this. But this is a stunning shade of lipstick. And if you're not willing to fork out money for, you know, luxury brands or even Lisa Eldridge, and you're looking for something that uh, might be a little bit more mid-tier, clearly not a drugstore brand, but a bit more, more mid-tier with the option to buy it on sale, then I definitely think Bad Blood is an excellent contender for being your beautiful sort of classic red in a more affordable uh, price range. So this here is a swatch for Bad Blood and I think once we start swatching you will see that Bad Blood is actually quite similar to some other shades that I have in my collection but it's not quite the same. I feel like it, it may be the matte version of Palazzo from Lisa Eldridge but that's about where it ends with you know being similar to something else. I love this color. The next lipstick I'm going to swatch is one that I have worn quite a bit in the last couple of weeks and that is one of the newest lipsticks in my collection. This is the uh, reformulated Dior Rouge Dior Velvet in the shade 866 Together. And Together is a gorgeous, not too bright but also not too dark, slightly desaturated, slightly vampy but not too vampy red. I don't know how else to describe it so I'm just going to put it on so you can see for yourself. If you looked at this footage and you thought, Mariam, you're wearing the same lipstick that you wore five seconds ago, you would be right, because I just realized that I think this is a dupe for Bad Blood from Urban Decay. I'm looking at myself in the mirror right now and I do not detect a difference. So I'm going to swatch it right next to Bad Blood so that we can see how similar they truly are. Honestly, they're rather similar. I mean, on a swatch, they may not look like the exact same shade, but I feel like on my lips, the difference is almost undetectable. I'm not mad because Bad Blood is a very old lipstick and I was already a little bit afraid that it may go off on me at some point and none of my Lisa or Pat lipsticks really were the same shade as Bad Blood. And I'm very happy that I have a replacement now in a gorgeous formula. So this is the new reformulated velvet formula from the Rouge Dior line from Dior. These are stunning. Um, this is one of the most comfortable, lightweight, undetectable in terms of like how it feels on the lips, uh, matte lipstick that I've ever worn. It doesn't dry out my lips. It reapplies beautifully upon itself. My only criticism, it is fragranced and maybe slightly less long-lasting compared to some of the other matte lipsticks that I have in my collection. Slightly less long-lasting compared to the matte trance or the velvets from Lisa Eldridge, but quite up there in terms of its quality to last really well. But in terms of the comfort, oh my gosh, this is probably one of the most comfortable matte lipsticks I have ever worn. With that said, Bad Blood from Urban Decay, it wears equally well and it is equally as comfortable. Um, this one is just slightly more lightweight on the lips. But if you really love this color but you don't want to fork out $50 for it because these new reformulated lipsticks from Dior are very expensive, here is Bad Blood for you, which is basically a perfect dupe for this shade. Gorgeous! Now, because I had to narrow down this choice to only 10 lipsticks and I wanted to per se include the five Lisa Eldridge lipsticks that are going to be in this video, there are only two Pat McGrath uh, Labs lipsticks that are featured in here. I have more reds from Pat McGrath. I love all of them, but I had to pick my absolute favorites because I had to include all of the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks that are going to be in this video, so I had to make choices when it comes to Pat. I'm sorry, Pat. But first and foremost, we're going to talk about the absolutely stunning one-of-a-kind Rouge 8 from Pat McGrath Labs, which was released last year with the... Was it for Chinese New Year? I think it was a Chinese New Year. Yeah, based on the packaging, it's Chinese New Year. So this is a much brighter, like slightly terracotta, slightly coral, but without being a coral, leaning red. Beautiful packaging, gorgeous color. One of the most like enlivening colors on my complexion. Let's 
One of my absolute favorite lipsticks to have entered my collection in the past year. I bought this about a year ago and I have not been able to shut up about it since then. Also, I hope this is a judgment-free zone and nobody's going to make comments about my wonky lip lines because for the life of me I cannot put on a red lipstick without a lip liner and make it look good. I can barely make it look good with a lip liner, let alone without it. So hopefully if the lip lines are super wonky, I'm not going to hear about it. Judgment-free zone. Anyway, Rouge 8. It sort of speaks for itself. It is such a beautiful shade. I don't know how it manages to do that, but it is bright while being muted. There is a certain mutedness to this color. It's not a deep red, it's not a, a orange-based red, but it is also not a classic red. To me, this is a slightly terracotta red, which is a bit desaturated, but at the same time it has bright qualities to it so that it really enlivens your complexion. It is such a gorgeous lipstick. Absolutely love Rouge 8 and I know that a lot of you have bought this shade based on my recommendation and I hope that you have not regretted your purchase. So here is a swatch for Rouge 8 so that you can see it compared to the other reds. I should maybe have put it just a little bit further away but okay, too little too late. Obviously, we can't do a top 10 red lipsticks and not include Mother's iconic Elson. Elson is a classic for a reason. I actually didn't have Elson for a very long time. Elson is one of her oldest matte trans lipsticks in her collection. Oh, something I forgot to mention. Both of these are in her matte trans formula. I do have one of the reds in her looks trans formula, the shade Magrat Muse, and it is only because I had to pick 10 favorite lipsticks that Magrat Muse isn't in this ranking. Uh, but Elson, let me put on Elson and then we can talk about it. So Elson was part of her very first matte trans release whenever these came out, maybe 2017. And I've always lost it after it because it looked like such a phenomenal red. But at the time I already had so many Urban Decay reds and then I started purchasing Lisa Eldridge reds and I thought, how can ever anything really be better than Ribbon from Lisa Eldridge? And while this is not better than Ribbon from Lisa Eldridge, it is the slightly deeper version, in fact, of Ribbon from Lisa Eldridge, it is still a glorious red. This is a classic red. To me, when people speak of a classic red, they refer to a shade like Elson. So there is quite a bit of blue going on in here, but there is also a little bit of depth to the color. So like I said, to me, Ribbon from Lisa Eldridge resides in the uh, same category. They're both classic reds, blue-toned reds, but Ribbon is a little bit brighter and that is how I justify having both of them in my collection because Ribbon is just like a teensy bit lighter than Elson. But Elson is just such a beautiful lipstick and luckily uh, Pat McGrath does really f great sales on her lip products around Black Friday. You can always get them for anything around 12 to 13 uh, euros or dollars depending on the year. So I was able to purchase Elson for 12 euros which is a really great price for such a phenomenal lipstick. So the matte trans formula is a beautiful comfortable... to me this is like a comfort matte formula. Is it going to be the most hydrating, uh, least uncomfortable matte lipstick you've ever worn? Maybe not. These do tend to get quite drying over the course of the day, but for a matte lipstick, they wear quite comfortably, they are very long lasting, uh, they will last you to quite a lot of like drinks and food before you have to reapply anything and they do reapply quite well uh, upon themselves. So overall I think this is a really great matte lipstick formula, especially if you're looking for something that is quite on the long lasting side. So just to recap before we move to Lisa Eldridge, because the rest are all Lisa Eldridge, we have Wonderland from Urban Decay, Bad Blood from Urban Decay, Dior 866 Together, Rouge 8 Pat McGrath Labs, Elson Pat McGrath Labs. Maybe something I forgot to mention, but hopefully it was clear from the random way in which I'm applying this. There's no ranking here. The only lipstick that I'm going to rank in its rightful first position is going to be Ribbon, which I'm going to demo for you last. For the rest, there's really no rhyme or reason. I'm just grabbing colors. Now, there is a rhyme or reason to this one. This is one of the loosens from Lisa Eldridge. This is the only sort of like creamy shiny formula that I've included in here because it is also the only creamy formula that does not bleed around my lip lines whatsoever. I don't know what kind of sorcery, what kind of black magic has gone into the formulation of this lipstick, but this is a beautiful, buildable, 
uh, tinted lip balm. It's not a lip balm because lip balms are really not very um, pigmented and these are quite pigmented, the Luxuriously Lucents from Lisa Aldrich, but they can be applied as a very almost like sheer lip balm tint kind of manner and they can also be built up to be a very shiny punchy creamy formula and I love them. They are currently my absolute favorite cream lipstick formula on the market um, without the shade of a doubt because not only are they comfortable to wear and beautiful on the lips but they don't bleed on my lip lines. Everything else that is a little bit more creamy and emollient unfortunately will bleed around my uh, already wonky looking lip lines even if I wear a lip liner. And these are the only ones that never do that which is why this is the only formula where I comfortably wear a red lipstick. Unfortunately she doesn't have ribbon in this formula just yet. Maybe we're going to get it at some point. I know she has it in her lip gloss formula. I would not dare to wear a ribbon in her gloss formula because I think that's going to be a disaster waiting to happen. But uh, this shade, the shade Palazzo, which is currently I think the only red, like true red that she has in that line, had to be mine because not only is it a glorious formula but it is also an absolutely beautiful color. You can immediately tell that compared to the matte lipsticks that I was demoing before, this looks, you know, slightly less, not pigmented, but maybe slightly less saturated on the lips. That's because of the formula. But the color itself, it is absolutely stunning. To me, this is essentially 866 Together and Bad Blood from Urban Decay, but then in a creamy formula. Because it is not a classic red, but it is not also not an orange warm toned red. It really has a bit of like warmth and brownness to it, but it still somehow manages to be a classic red. Beautiful shade, absolutely glorious. I love this lipstick. Okay, you guys, I got a bit distracted because Hobbs and Nicola called that they finally arrived at their destination for skiing. I'm going to remove Palazzo and then we're going to apply the next Lisa Eldridge lipstick. Let's go with one of her insanely saturated colors. So this is the shade Strawberry Shock. And Strawberry Shock is the most delicious summer watermelon bright red. It is so fun, so beautiful. I haven't actually worn this lipstick in a couple of months because I usually wear it a little bit more in the summer. So even like demoing it for this video and the five seconds I'm going to wear it for this video is already giving me so much joy. Look how fun and electric and almost neon. There's a neon quality to Strawberry Shock for sure, especially if you compare it to the other lipsticks that I have demoed thus far. This is the most different one. It is, um, in terms of its undertones, much um, less deep. There is much less, you know, pigment. There's a lot of white pigment going on in here. And there is quite a bit of, you know, play between pink and orange and red in order to create this beautifully neon, you know, watermelony, strawberry kind of red. Beautiful shade, but not really very suited for the winter and fall months. So uh, unfortunately, I do use this lipstick quite a bit more seasonally. A lot of the other colors that I mentioned here I, are either classic reds or something that I would wear all year round, whereas Strawberry Shock is one of those colors that I do tend to wear only when it's really warm outside. This is in her insanely saturated formula, which as the name implies, is supposed to be more pigmented compared to her, to her velvet lipsticks. Um, I don't know if that's really the case. I haven't really noticed much of a difference. I mean, they are very punchy and very pigmented, um, but her velvets are also quite pigmented. So I'm not really sure where this like distinction in the terminology comes from, but I do love this lipstick because it just makes me happy. Also, I forgot to show you the uh, arm swatches. This was Palazzo and this here is Strawberry Shock. I'm starting to make an absolute mess out of the foundation around my lips. I'm very sorry. I did give you a fair warning. Next, we're going to talk about a lipstick from Lisa Aldrich that is actually quite new to my collection, but it is so unique and so pretty and so I have nothing else quite like it. So this is Velvet Enchantment. This is a lipstick that is borderline a nude, but it has red tones to it so it's a very desaturated very like subtle red it's for the type of person i think who is really scared of a bright like if you're really scared of a shade like strawberry shock but you want 
something in the same line, something that will liven up your complexion, but it will be slightly less saturated in terms of its color. I think enchantment is everything you ever needed. Let me put it on so that you can see. It is so incredibly interesting to be swatching all of these colors uh, in the same video, like right after each other, even for me, because out of context, I would not hesitate for a second to tell you that Enchantment is a red. But if you compare it to all of these other shades, you can immediately tell how much more on the nude, desaturated, you know, not in your face kind of red, this leans. It's almost like if you compare it to the other reds, it almost even doesn't qualify as a red. It is a red, it's what Lisa Eldridge also describes it at, but see how much more nude that is. So if you're scared of a red lipstick, I would suggest to start with something like Enchantment. Enchantment is gorgeous. It definitely has the, the tones that really bring out that same brightness in your complexion, just like Strawberry Shock, just like Rougeade from Pat McGrath Labs. Um, but at the same time, it has subtleness to the red hue, like there is not a lot of like red pigment in here. There is just enough red pigment in here to qualify this as a red, but really that's where the redness of this lipstick, lipstick ends, uh, which makes it just so incredibly interesting to me. I love this color. Next, let's watch Her Majesty, Velvet Duchess. Velvet Duchess is the most beautiful, like purple leaning red, purple leaning vampy red. This is the only truly like vampy red that I'm going to show you out of the 10 that are present in here. You can tell that I have a bit of a preference, you know, for the not very dark burgundy type reds. Uh, my preference is really for the more like mid-range, like mid-tone, uh, sort of like classic leaning reds. Uh, the very orange leaning reds, I do have some, I enjoy them, but I think the more classic reds and shades like, you know, Ribbon, shades like Elson, uh, the terracotta leaning reds flatter me so much more. The Duchess sort of speaks for itself. It is vampy and at the same time it is elegant. I always compare uh, Ribbon and Duchess and I uh, always make the analogy of two sisters with like Ribbon being the well-behaved one who stays home and does her homework and Duchess being the rule-breaking sneaks out at night through the window to go out partying kind of shade. It is just beautiful. I love this color. I love that it has those like vampy tones in it without being too dark. I don't know what to tell you. Her Royal Majesty Duchess says it all. And finally, let's talk about the red lipstick that currently has a grip of my heart, and that is the shade Ribbon. As you can also tell just from the bullet, the most used red lipstick in my collection. Let me put on Ribbon so that you can see for yourself why it is my favorite red. There was a time in my life, let's call it BR, before Ribbon, and there is a time of my life after Ribbon. I thought before owning this lipstick that I knew what a classic red is and I had had a classic red. And then I put this shade on and I finally understood what people meant with a classic red. This is the most beautiful, well-balanced, like perfectly balanced classic red that is not too dark, that is not too bright, that is not too warm, and it is also not too cool toned. I literally can't imagine and I have not seen anyone on whom this lipstick doesn't look flawless. If you're willing to make the step further from enchantment towards a real classic red, I think ribbon is the color and the lipstick to go for. I think Elson from Pat McGrath Labs is another one that I would highly recommend if you wanted to try a classic red because it is extremely similar to ribbon, maybe just a tad darker but whenever I have to make a recommendation for a classic red lipstick, one that you can rely on the color, you can rely on the formula, you can rely on the way this lipstick wears, feels on the lips, like the comfort level, everything about this lipstick is a 10 out of 10. So I can wholeheartedly recommend it even to people who are hesitant to wear a red lipstick and I hope that I have never steered anyone wrong with my recommendation of Ribbon. But to me, Ribbon is flawless. Ribbon is the red lipstick to rule them all.
And now that I have swatched all of the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, I think it is also uh, good to go over them once again. So we here we have Palazzo, Strawberry Shock, Enchantment, Duchess and Ribbon. And very opportune that I have swatched Ribbon right underneath Elson so that you can see that Ribbon is just slightly brighter and maybe a tad more purple toned, like compared to um, Elson from Pat McGrath Labs. They are extremely similar, they wear and look very similar on the lips, but there's just a slight difference. So to me, either one you pick of the two, you're going to end up with a gorgeous classic red. And I think my lips literally cannot take another swatch, so I'm going to forgo my bonus swatch of the Urban Decay lipstick that I was talking about earlier. And I just wanted to show it to you very quickly because um, it is a shade that I have loved so much in the past, so much so that you can see how little of the bullet is left. So this is the shade Psycho from Urban Decay. And Psycho is one of their comfort mats. And what makes Psycho very interesting is that it is a pink uh, leaning red, but it has blue glitter in it and it is blue glitter that you can't feel on your lips it doesn't feel greedy and but it just creates the most interesting effect when you put it on your lips i don't even know if urban decay still makes this lipstick but as a bonus one if i had space for one more lipstick lipstick to show you in this video it would have been psycho psycho is gorgeous but i don't think my lips can take one more swatch. Uh, I think I'm going to close this video off because I think we've talked about a number of really phenomenal red lipsticks. This video is going to be my love song, you know, my ode to red lipsticks. I love red lipsticks. I will forever be a red lipstick girl. I hope this video was useful for you and if you are not a believer in red lipstick you could still you know select a shade in here that might flatter you like I said if you're a beginner go for something like Velvet Enchantment from Lisa Eldridge and if you're willing to step make the step forward go for something uh, like Ribbon or Elson and if you're willing to go a little bit more vampy, go for Duchess. If you want something really bright, you can go for Strawberry Shock. And if you want it to be on the classic red side, but still a bit more desaturated compared to Ribbon and Elson, then go for something like Bad Blood or Together from Dior. So, I'm going to close this video off now. I'm going to go grab some dinner and watch a movie and hopefully edit this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know which was your favorite red, if you could even pick one. Do you have any of these? What do you think about them? Do you love red lipstick as well? Which is your favorite red lipstick? I would love to hear from you. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!